Hello and welcome. Today, we have interesting stories including one about including one about original poster whose future father-in-law stole money she and her fiancé wanted to buy a house with and left the with a debt. Sit back, relax and enjoy. First story. I told my son slash nephew the truth and my wife is pissed. Confusing title, right? Welcome to the crap show. My wife got pregnant when we started dating at 16. We decided to give the kid up for adoption once she had him. It was a tough decision, but we weren't ready to be parents at 16. My older sister had just gotten married and found out she had infertility. So, she proposed the idea of adopting our son. That way we could still be involved in his life and watch him grow up. My wife had him by C-section and my sister has raised him since. We agreed that none of us would tell him until we all agreed he was old enough to understand it. Sure, it was tough to watch him go through life knowing that's our kid until we finally had kids when we were ready. We're now 36 and he's getting ready to turn 20. I've got a great relationship with him as his uncle. He comes to me with problems he can't bring up his parents, comes to our house regularly to spend time with our kids, and even said that he considers me his dad, since his parents got divorced. The top replies. It was the right time to tell him, with him calling you dad, but a quick text or call to your wife was in order. Letting her know you're going to tell him and give her the chance to be there when you do. Rebuilding a car together sounds like a great family tradition. Glad you'll be able to bond as father and son. Original poster replies. I wish I had told them. I had built up the confidence to tell him and didn't even think of anyone else, which was pretty selfish for me to only think of myself in the situation. I hope we can still have a good bond, but I'm still not sure if I want him to think of me as his dad or still his uncle. He asked me that and I told him we could discuss that with his mom and aunt. Second reply. The only selfish thing is everyone else's behavior. Crap happens, parents are human, and at 20, he can handle that. From the sound of it, he's a responsible young man. With him calling you dad, I can assume dad is at least close to out of the picture. Might even help him come to terms with that. By the way, love the idea of the car. Great way to keep him focused on something and out of trouble. The original poster replies. Yep, he's been out of the picture since he was in first grade and hasn't talked to them since. My sister never remarried or dated, so he grew up with me being the father in his life. He called me dad when he was younger, but stopped around fifth grade. Thank you. I'm glad it's something that he can learn from and have something to be proud to show off in the end. Update. We had conversations all the time about telling him as soon as he turned 13. Then it got pushed to 15, then to 18, and still, no one had wanted to tell him. We had a deal. If he found a car he wanted to restore, I would pay for anything he needed if he did the work. My dad did the same thing when I was a teenager and it was a great life lesson and I still have that car to this day. He normally just calls me by my name or a nickname made up by my wife, his mom, or the kids. Today, he came to the shop to do some work while I was out there working on something else. Then I hear, hey daddy mean, my name, can you hand me a rag? That was when I knew this kid needed to know. I mean, he's almost a grown adult. He can handle it. I told him I needed to tell him something. So we sat down at the table in there and I just flat out told him, wife and I are your birth parents. He looked confused because his mom has said she gave birth to him so he would never think anything was up. He had lots of questions and I answered them as honestly as I could. He left after and asked his mom about it, who then called my wife to tell her that I told him everything. I knew I should start digging my own grave in the backyard when she put her phone down with no words and just stared at me. 
She was livid I didn't ask anyone before I told him. It was selfish, but it had to be done. I couldn't hold it in anymore. Update. Wow I had no idea this post would get this much support and positive comments. I messed up in many ways and felt terrible and like an idiot for telling him. My sister wants to have dinner tonight with my wife and me to tell him the full story and to discuss what happens in the future. I'll make an update post after. Final update. To answer a lot of questions that were asked. After a little bit, my wife and sister thanked me for telling him. The day before that, my sister and her just had a conversation about telling him and neither could bring themselves to. Yes, it was an idiot move and selfish to do it without warning, but who knows how long they would wait to tell him. My wife and I never abandoned him at all. We've been in his life since he was born and for every major life step, helped with financial decisions like college, sports, and buying his first car, and helped in any way we could. Dinner went relatively well. My wife made delicious parmesan chicken in case anyone was wondering. A lot of emotions and conversations we weren't ready for. The main things that came out of our conversation were that my sister will always be his mom since she raised him, we will support him with whatever decision he makes, and will always be his family. He asked if he could call my wife and me his parents and we happily agreed. He lightened the mood by saying, so now you're my duncle and she's my man. But not in a weird way haha, so, today, we gained the older son we've always wanted and our kids gained the older brother they've needed. I couldn't be happier with the decision I made last night. The top reply. I hope your son slash nephew doesn't abandon your sister because I've read a lot of stories about adoptive kids ditching their foster parents for their bio ones after they've reconnected with them. Maybe keep an eye on their relationship as time goes by. Your sister might end up hurt. Other than that I'm glad to see y'all are happy. The second reply. This is such a beautiful thing you have all done. You are really blessed with your family and I'm so happy this is the outcome. Your son has got such strong people behind him. Wish you many amazing years Dunkle and Matt. Rest of family too. The second story. My wife got selected for jury duty and there's nothing I can do. My wife has been so excited for this conference in her field of study. She has been planning on going to it for more than four months now and it is just around the corner, in like one week, well, she got a jury duty summons for county court and, being the sweet woman that I married, saw it as her civic duty to go along amicably. She filled out her availability, listed the days of the conference as non-available, and now just had her jury selection over Zoom. In it she mentioned that she was unavailable for those dates and that things were already booked, etc. Knowing her, she probably answered sincerely and honestly to all the other questions. Well, the judge told her that she was selected for the entirety of that conference. There's no budging, no consideration for the fact that she has already spent money, also no hopes of reimbursement. Granted, we do all right with my job, but to see her come out of the bedroom and burst into tears is just heartbreaking. I tried calling the courthouse on her behalf to understand any options but have basically been told they don't care. She hasn't stopped crying all day and hasn't been able to focus on her classes, which she will now be missing 8 days of thanks to this, I am both furious and defeated at this point. I can make her comfort food and give her hugs, but all I'm doing now is trying to figure out all of the mildly controversial things to save during a jury selection so I never get picked and she never does again. I don't like feeling this angry at something that should be a service to society and this defeated on behalf of my wife. The top replies. You can apply to be excused. Seems like you have a valid reason slash someone other than your wife made a scheduling mistake. Case closed. The original poster replies.
I called the judge's team and the county office and both of them said that there's no way to be excused. Apparently, being a student and having a conference are not excusable in Utah. If this is some sort of tactic where they tell you one thing unless you find a way out of it, I am all ears for how to circumvent this. Edit. Thank you all for your kind words and suggestions, however outlandish at times. This has helped create a little bit of catharsis for my wife and I a few points of clarification. 1. My wife is past the jury selection date and has been selected, as in told she is in the jury. For the future, we will probably keep a deck of inflammatory flashcards to study before a potentially inconvenient selection to avoid this happening. 2. She did not reschedule her selection because it was originally slated for early January and then got bumped to yesterday. She then assumed that they would take into account the availability she had provided and did not reschedule. 3. For all our anger in this, there's no way she would not try to honestly evaluate the trial. It kind of sucks more knowing that she's going to treat this thing like her job, but the system itself is doing a good job of creating a sense of, never again. Third story. My older brother convinced my girlfriend to break up with me but doesn't want his wife to know he was involved. I'm 30 male, Kaylee is 27F. My older brother is 38M and his wife is 39F. I dated Kaylee for two years. She knew about my past which isn't the best. But I was clean for a while before I met her, over a year. I was open with her about everything, literally everything. We decided to move in together. We lived with my brother and his family while we looked for a place since we had moved to their state. My brother has a finished apartment in his basement and we lived there. We all got along fine but we didn't live there long before we found our own place. Kaylee and I moved in together and it was fine and then out of the blue she broke it off. Said I was too risky and I hadn't been completely honest with her. She said, someone, had told her the truth, about what I had done and how I had relapsed last August the first never had. The only people who I texted in August were my brother and therapist and I told both of them on a bad day I had wanted to use again and if I had it in front of me I would have. Not that I was going to or looking for it or had. Just that I was in a bad place at that point. He's the only one who knew about it other than my therapist. I asked her what I hadn't told her the truth about. She told me an untrue version of something that happened 10 years ago. The original version my ex told, which she now admits was a lie. Another thing my brother would have told her. I confronted him and he admitted it. He basically said the text in August was as good as a relapse because I would have if I could have. He told me Kaylee deserved better and he was preventing her from getting hurt even if it's down the line. I also found out that he gave her money for a down payment on an apartment so she could move out of the one she was living in with me. The thing that really ticks me off is in the middle of this my brother's wife walked in and he made me stop talking. Like he didn't want her to hear. As I was leaving I waited until we were in the same room together. I went. I'm just curious why you're so involved in my relationship with Kaylee that you'd go to her. Tell her things about me that you know were untrue and exaggerated, and then pay for her to move out of our apartment? And I overhear his wife saying as I'm leaving, what is he talking about and my brother is going, nothing, he's just making stuff up because he needs to blame someone. He's blatantly lying and making me out to be the bad guy. The top replies, I think you should talk to your sister-in-law privately. Ask to her to sit down with you and ask her the questions you have. Ask her why she and her husband are supporting Kaylee breaking up with you. Ask her why they are paying for her to get her own apartment. I am guessing she doesn't know about any of this, and if she does, maybe you can get a straight answer without your older brother being a bully. Like the other responses, 
I am leaning towards he has a crush on Kaylee and if you guys break up, he pays for her to live in another apartment. He is setting himself up to be her savior and start an affair with her. By funding an apartment, he has already given himself control of the situation. It would make cheating on his wife easier if they had a private place to do it in where he doesn't have to worry about her walking in. The second reply. Kaylee chose to listen to your brother and not director Eckley speak with you about what he was saying and go from there. That she trusted him more than she trusted you. Sure. Being a recovered addict has its implications, but she could have had a mature conversation with you about her concerns. Tell your son-in-law and let her do what she wants with that information. She may have already noticed red flags within her marriage, and what you know may be the last few pieces of the puzzle. It definitely sounds like he's making his moves and keeping in contact with Kaylee. I would say him giving money for a deposit on an apartment is definitely something she should know. Congratulations on staying clean. I genuinely hope you keep it up and find people who support and love you. Fourth story. Future father-in-law, 69M. Depleted fiancés, 27M. Account to prevent us from buying our first house, 27F 27M. Need advice on how to support fiancé and handle situation. We've been together for almost five years. Wedding is in 11 months. Future father-in-law stole 95k to prevent us from buying a house, future father-in-law, 69m, stole 95k. We were getting ready to buy a house, had everything all set. We both have excellent credit and savings, including my fiancé, 27m, having 65k in a managed brokerage and 30k in a trust which we intended to use as a portion of our down payment. I, 27F, also make more than my fiancé so I was going to pay a larger portion of the mortgage. Months ago my fiancé told his father that he was planning to use this money towards our down payment. He asked if he was going to get in his way, his father said no multiple texts saying this money was all his and could be used for the purchase of our first house. Flash forward to today, we put an offer in yesterday given we already did the whole proof of funds with our mortgage broker. Then his father drained all the money in both of his accounts yesterday. My fiancé has demanded his father put the money back, but he refuses unless we do a prenup. Agreed. Then a lien. Agreed. Then he goes Mia. Then it's always something else. Then it wasn't that he drained it, it was a coincidence. Just a bunch of games to block our purchase. There will always be another hoop. His father was on his accounts because of the way my fiancé received a portion of the money in his managed brokerage. A portion of the funds, and the start of the account, was an inheritance from his grandfather. His father was on the account because before the grandfather passed, he lost his sight and needed help with finances father was never removed. Now we have to take our offer back just as it was getting accepted. We've been dealing with issues with his parents for some time now, and this is beyond minor conflict now. We do couples counseling and that helps for us. He's extremely upset and I'm at a loss to how to help him through it when I need support of my own. I'm seeing red and want the cops called in the father charged with a felony for theft and extortion. We're still going to not get the house, but enough is enough. I want to support him and will. Advice on how to support him and also what we can do to remedy. The top replies. Is this a financial question or a relationship question? If a financial, legal question, this is the wrong sub, but I absolutely encourage you to go down this route if you have a legal case. In terms of the relationship question, I think you already know going no contact with him makes sense. The second reply. Sounds like they don't want y'all together. How much money do you and your fiancé make? Time to go no contact with the rich idiot parents if you guys truly want to be happy. 
Original poster replies. 200k soon to be 250 to 300. Expecting to settling around 500k. Drinking a crap ton right now to process, so sorry if the grammar sucks. But I make a crap ton more than his son, so fork him. He's just killing their relationship which absolutely sucks foth our fiancé. But you lost control instead of gaining it you fork.